today on our show. A man so talented, he plays three roles on one show. The man Teddy Sears. What? That's right, everybody. Thanks, guys. Zoom <laughs> is in the house, man. We're going to talk about Flash and Jay Garrick and Hunter's Almond and, and Zoom. Three performances in one man from Washington, D.C. on today's Fat Man on Batman. Welcome back to Fat Man Batman. I'm Kevin Smith. I'm Mark Bernard. Look who's with us, man. What? Holy shit, give him a sexy close-up quick. Get in there. Look at that. <laughs> That's the amazing Teddy Sears right there, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Teddy uh, plays for those, how could you not know this? If you watch the show, you must know. If you've seen him crying over it, you know that we know. Yeah, yeah come on, Flash. Come on. Flash is come our on. religion here on this show. Even though it's called Fat Man on Batman, might as well be called Fat Man on Flash, man, because uh, <laughs> we do a lot of talking about Flash on this show. So we're honored to have with us Somebody from The Flash, somebody who's beat The Flash's ass, man. Uh, go to the wide heavens, we're leaving him out. Teddy here, uh, he's in town uh, because they're done. You're done up there, right? They're all, finished? All done about two weeks ago, feeling good. Mm. and uh, They wrapped. Yeah, yeah, wrapped. Uh, everyone's happy, summer's here, but man, we, we wrapped on a high note. We got some really, really good shit coming. I know, up. aside from like this, the uh, script that I did, Zach's 10th script, the yeah. episode I directed, yeah. is emotionally wonderful, but they teased two things. They didn't tease. Yeah. I was there on set. And they get the <laughs> breakdown of yeah. what the last two episodes are. Yeah. And there was something that happened in the episode right after mine where I was like, it involves you in a big bad way. Yeah. That I was like, ah, ah, ah. I wish that I was directing it because it is mad genius. Yeah. It's yeah. the finale of the episode right after mine. So, like, the penultimate episode. Yep. yep. Mm. Uh, uh, we're not going to spoil anything. No, 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 no. Nobody wants to lose jobs and stuff like that. But oh my God! It there is. I saw that breakdown. I was like, <gasps> and then for what yeah. they decided to do for the absolute season finale, yeah, it was kind of mad, mad shit as well. It's crazy. Like they, this is a, a show that ends like big, man. It's not even like last season. They ended on that huge high note with their season finale, yeah, where your hat comes through at the end, and where everyone was like, oh shit, Jay Garrick's <laughs> coming. Right. If only we knew. Um, (laughs) Then it it felt like that season finale was huge. It felt like the last three episodes of this, and I'm not throwing mine in for ego or anything like that, but the storyline that happens in that episode, the Barry stuff, is really crucial to the last two episodes. So it feels like a kind of triumvirate episodes ends insanely, insanely strong. Yeah, yeah, it does. And then even after we have, okay, so obviously Zoom is going to face off with Barry Allen, Flash, they're going to have a thing, you know, which they have to do. They have to sort of, you know, meet in one sort of final, you know, high noon style, you know, shoot him up, draw, fucking, you Sprint know. off. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> yeah guy's got to face against the villain. He's got to face yeah, bad guy, or, yeah, it's a good guy. And we've seen a few times throughout the season, Barry and Zoom, you know, go head to head and each time, like, Barry did not no, end well. Yeah, he always gets his ass handed. <laughs> yeah. right? right? <laughs> but this time... You know, it's it's going to go the way it's going to go, but it's not like, it's easy to say, okay, well, listen, we sort of know what it's building up to, and, and Flash is going to win, right? But, like, it's so not that simple, mm-hmm. and there's it so doesn't end at that place. It, it ends, like, and I think everyone's going to be looking around, like, mm-hmm. holy fuck, like, <laughs> What the fuck are you guys going to do for season three now? Yes, yeah, you know? yes, dude. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. When I saw that last sheet, I was like, how do you follow this up? It's like, yeah. And it's not like drop the mic, cancel the show, but no, it is no. so, like, it's such a weird pivot moment Yeah. in season two. It's something like most cats would do in season five. I uh, completely agree, yeah. When season they're like, you know, this has gotten stale, and we really have to shake it up because we're losing viewers. Yes. No, exactly, exactly. <laughs> and this shows that it's like Apex right now has got viewers coming in. I think it's the yeah. highest rated show on CW. So yes. they are yeah. not in danger of, like, we got to do this out of desperation. No, no gimmick, no stunt. Once no. again, it's just like they just, they make bold, creative yep. writing choices over there, and this is absolutely one of the, one of the Well, boldest. I mean, when we had Andrew Kreisberg on the, on the audio podcast, he talked about the fact that when they got to Flash, after mm-hmm. they went to Arrow and they sort of cut their teeth, they figured it out, yep. they're like, now we're just going to do everything. Out of the gate. Like, we're not leaving anything in the bag yeah. for the next time. Just do it, because you yep. might not get to do it later. Yeah. yeah. And that sort of just writing like you're running out of time is what makes it work. That's yeah. what this feels like. It felt like as they're not writing like we're running out of time, like, oh, shit, we're up against it. Just throw mm-hmm. anything down. It is definitely plotted. Um, and they made a really kind of like 
bold choice where you're mm. almost like, again, kind of yeah. like I said, you're like, how do you go to season mm. three? But yeah. they, uh, they must have had a conversation yep. where they yep. were like, if we're going to do this, <laughs> we must, you know, what happens when we land? Because the exactly. jump is glorious. Right. The jump is glorious. But if you don't have something to land on, then then why then why jump, you know? <laughs> right. Then, then, then the jump is a gimmick, you know? Right. But it's so not. They so have it. Yeah, they so have it nicely figured out, I think, for where to launch season three. Mm-hmm. You know, Kreisberg was telling me that the writers have two weeks off, and then they go right back to work. That's so it? I, I think, like, they might even be ending their two weeks now, because mm-hmm. they're already writing. To get into a room. Yeah. That may be the case, three. because uh, yeah. Zach, I, his, I, you know, they're talking to Zach about doing another yeah. script. They talked to me about doing another episode. And it's right now. It feels like that's months away, but right now they I'm, must be about to dive back in. Story. Story. I know a couple yeah. of guys, Derek Hughes and Ben Robb, who wrote the King Shark episode, mm. who just joined as co-executive producers. They oh. started a week ago. Really? Oh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Like the, the room is up. So they already got them thinking. And yeah. Stuff. So yeah. Like, I think there's a baby room to do the sort of the macro plotting. Ain't nothing baby about it, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> this grown up shit. Yeah. Um, let's talk. All right. So we dove right in, but let's kind of take it back. Yeah. How do you wind up on the flesh? Where were you born, man? I was born in Washington, D.C. You mentioned that briefly. Uh, grew mm. up in D.C. I uh, was raised in Maryland, just outside mm. sort of Chevy Chase, Bethesda mm. area. Mom and dad are still there. They grew up there, so around um, lots of aunts, uncles, cousins. I'm one of four. So mm. anyway, great family environment. Like, uh, you know, I don't know, sort of a wonderful place to grow up. I eventually ended up in New York City. Um, I spent five years there. Did, uh, you know, I don't know. Got little acting jobs just to sort of start to build a resume. When was the acting? When did acting come into play? Like when you were a kid? When you were in high no, school? No, no, yeah, fuck no. I, like it was a weird thing. It didn't. It didn't come my way until I was twenty three. I, hmm. I went to uh, late bloomer and shit. Yeah, I don't know what it was. It's like uh, fuck. We always <laughs> there were like four or five movies on rotation in our house as a kid. It was Caddyshack. It was Animal House. <laughs> it was Beverly Hills Cop. It was Ghostbusters. So you grew up in my house, and I just never saw you. Because <laughs> <laughs> I mean, essentially, that was my place. Always playlist. on, man. You know, two young brothers and older sister we just had that sort of sense of humor early like mm-hmm. even early well Muppets of course but Sesame Street the sort mm-hmm. of off the wall wacky shit that really sort of helped set our sense of humor and um, and of course early SNL like we mentioned John mm-hmm. Candy Chevy Chase those guys who were in all those great great movies so that was sort of where it started, I guess the seed was planted mm-hmm. early, but there was no um, nobody no, to be no, like, "Hey, why don't you be an actor?" Or no, something and like that. from the DC area, I don't know if, if it's like this where you grew up too. It's like no one's mom mm-hmm. or dad made a living in the arts. Like you, right. you, you went to work. You went Fucking to an office. Fucking foreign. It might as well be somebody being like, uh, "We come from Mars." Like that. The idea of like <laughs> you'd get paid for that. Right. Right. It happens like in Los Angeles and New York, but like that's it. Yeah, and when you're not in, in or near those metro areas, like DC is. It's DC, it's politics, mm, it's no. government, it's mm. uh, My dad, mom weren't, actually no one in my family was in that sort of side of things. It was always just, my well, mom's a teacher, my dad um, worked for a big real estate company like in the office. So it was like, you know, just, I don't know, nothing artistic, but we loved, um, we all loved music, we loved movies, we loved, uh, all my siblings found something creative to do, but, mm. But no, so it wasn't like the, 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 that could ever be something that one does to make a living. It was like, you know, get good grades, go to a good school, mm-hmm. get a good job. What was a good job? Money. What were you going to do? I went to University of Virginia. I went to Maryland for a year, okay. transferred to Virginia uh, sophomore year, and um, went to the business school. And so there was a good two-year business program. But, you know, it was like you could be an accountant, you could go into marketing, right. you could be... Uh, Organizational, but well, like all this, nothing really grabbed me. The the one piece of it all that grabbed me was being being an entrepreneur. But I didn't know what I wanted to do. I just sort of loved. I wanted to be in control of my mm. my shit, you know. I don't right. know, but I had no I had no idea. I knew I didn't want to go work for some company I didn't care about. It had to be something I cared about, and it had to be something I was in control of. But it wasn't until sort of in a roundabout way I ended up in New York City as a 23 year old where. You know, I had some good friends, so I had that sort of that, that foundation of at least I wasn't alone there. But right. but mm. such a creative, such a, an artistic, such a, sort of an impulsive mm. city. This is 2001, uh, end of 2000s when I moved there. That um, Right before. Right no, before. No, yeah. You know, it was November, so it was 10 months before. What part of uh, town were you living in? Uh, Gramercy, 24th and 3rd. Okay. And a high school friend... Uh, I just started working, you know, he's an investment banker. He needed to fill an apartment. Sent mm-hmm. out a mass email to whoever, like, hey, anyone thinking about moving to New York? Like, we got to fill a room. And I was like, actually, that, 
that sounds great. And I got awesome parents who were like, you know, cool, give it a shot. Right. Uh, I had I had, I had fifteen hundred bucks. I remember fifteen hundred bucks total, and I knew rent was a thousand. So I, I was like, okay, I got six weeks. I gotta like figure something out. I started catering, dude. I started like you know doing whatever I could just to make a little extra money. And uh, I, I got in with a with a modeling agency at the time. I, I, I'm 6'4", like I was never gonna do anything sort of real. I'll but tell you right now, you were gonna be the world's <laughs> best looking accountant. <laughs> <laughs> Following through with the first pad. Jesus Christ. Could you imagine if, like, this dude showed up to do your taxes and you're like, hello. <laughs> you would fucking break up families. Man. It's a good thing you didn't go down that path. But honey, all these numbers are wrong. Shut up! Yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, it's right where I'm sitting. <laughs> it, was, it was, it was, uh, thank you. That's uh, nice of you to say. It was it sort makes of it's a long way of saying it. it makes sense that, like, if you're in New York and somebody's like, New York, yeah, one of the ca model capitals of the mm -hmm. world, man. Well, it was like, you know, so, so I did, I sort of, you know, friend of a friend met, met a guy. He's like, you know, so yeah, let's give this a shot. That agency, which is no longer a business, got a phone call from One Life to Live saying, hey, listen, we got two lines on this upcoming episode. Send us some guys. Uh, you know, this is the type of story that, that drives, you know, some people crazy. But I didn't want to act. I just thought, well, this would be a fun thing to do. <laughs> As a, as like a, it was gonna be a fun story one day. I'll go say tell my grandkids I did an audition. You know, um, I I went on the audition and I just I was like, well, I, you know what? I don't know shit about acting, but I know the kind of bad acting uh, that I hate is that it's the type that looks fake. So just right. don't just be as real as possible. Don't look like you're like you're you know like you're bullshitting. Just look real, look natural. And I I don't know I don't know why they picked me, but they picked me. So I went to work on One Life to Live for, you know, my fucking, it was a fucking Valentine's Day episode that you right. know, the shirtless bartender <laughs> for July. You know what I mean? Look at how adorable like, you are, dude. You really didn't want to say it. Really, like, probably like, look it up on IMDb, you know, so I'm just going to say, <laughs> I was the titty bartender. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's, how the, that's how Zoom titty started. Bar, Holy yeah. shit! Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, no, that's that's, that's not just of sex, but fuck, like, fast enough. forward, uh, you know, <laughs> I don't know, 12 or 13 years later, uh, has They're a lot still changed. Got you yeah. 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 <laughs> Just take the mics off and make it like a bow tie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh my uh, God. So, all right. So you so, get to one life to live. Well, like, you're and, I and I loved it. And I loved it. Did I you do like, the two lines? I did the two lines. What were the two lines? Like, you want a drink or like? Uh, yeah. I, I remember I, I was hitting on, uh, you know, it was a contract girl and her contract other actor boyfriend was another bartender. Basically, it was like, you know, run interference and make him jealous so they they could get what it was my lines was probably something like you know yeah i don't know you sitting here all by yourself can i get you f who the fuck cares <laughs> <laughs> It was garbage. It was, it was garbage. Thank to get you. There. I was trying to dredge <laughs> out. It's a long buried memory. Uh, but I tell you what, man, I got to work and I was just like, I was terrified. I'd never done anything like this before, and no bullshit. I was just, man, my my uh, my heart was in my throat because I was so convinced I was going to stutter. Mm -hmm. I was going to stutter. I was going to embarrass myself, and they were never going to have me back again. But uh, you know, I got the lines out when they called action. It was fine. But I just remember loving it. I just remember being like, God, if I could fucking do this. Um, and life on the wire, it's just like <gasps> on a wire, exactly. And uh, you know what little modeling I'd done. It's so not about what you bring to it. It's like oh, there's a here's a one dimensional. Here's what you look like. Um, it, it's it, it's like it's so nice to actually <laughs> be appreciated for fucking <laughs> something human and for something real. Something for or for and you have to like no matter what kind of acting you're you're doing, you have to by definition of of act of performance infuse life into it. You yes. have to bring something of yourself yeah, yeah, well, to put into it. Fake version of yourself, whatever. Right. You're still putting something in it. Like yeah. modeling, you're just, you know, they're taking your you're, soul, they're taking the mannequin. image, and that's yeah, it. Exactly. Yeah, you're making, and, uh, and it's I, not to say, like, right now, there's a bunch of fucking models like, go to hell, you fat prick. Look, it's <laughs> If we knew town. how to drive, we would drive no, over and kick your ass. We understand it's a town. We're not taking that away <laughs> no, no, at all. No, but it's, it's just in it's terms of picture, standing right, there but. and having your picture taken, standing there and having your picture taken 24 frames a second while right. you're saying things. Right, right, right. It's mm -hmm. a world of difference. And you get to be you more in the second situation, even if you're saying bullshit things. Yeah. Because you have to pull from the real world. Just like you, you said, you yeah, can't you be to. like, I don't want to do the acting where it sounds fake. So I'm just going to try to be real. And where does one pull the real from? Experience. It, it, exactly yeah. right. Yeah, experience and relating to another human being, listening, mm. answering, all this stuff that we do in our day-to-day. -day. But as a, well, as a craft, I had, no, I had no craft. I had no training. Mm. I, 
I very luckily um, they kept bringing me back. They liked what I was doing or whatever. Same I don't know what character. It was. Same character. It went from an under five to a recurring, recurring to a contract. What is an under five? Under five oh, lines. Under five lines. Is it your is way? It right? Right? <laughs> is it like, what's the lingo? Yeah, yeah. For a soap, that's five lines or less, and it's a certain pay grade. So okay. more than five lines is considered recurring. So it's a different pay grade, and then the, where you can go from there is they they lock you up. Mm. So that's what happened to me. I just sort of got it through the back door. It was so it was so great because suddenly. You know, it was a, I was a thousand bucks an episode. Not to be, not to be crude, and talk money, but like, you know, my rent was a thousand bucks, and I was like, holy fuck! Like, you're I, covered. I, I was. I, I remember you're not man, spending money, man. I had like fucking thirty dollars. I remember thirty dollars every time I went to the grocery store was like just buy, like, like cheese and peanut butter was a luxury. You know, right. at least until I finally got a little bit, and I was like, oh my god! So in one day, I can pay my rent, and then the rest I can like. I mean, I pay off the. I fucking. Credit card by spying everything like so. You mean I have to like pay this back? I this. <laughs> Wait, I, I didn't know. So I didn't all, I, all that shit you learn when you're you know. But the long and short of it is, I I I, I loved it. It kind of found me in a way that I could never. I, so I didn't do any plays in high school. I didn't do any stuff in college. How awesome though! It's it just not sort of like bubbled it's the, to the surface when it did. Twenty. It happened later, late happened bloomer later. and stuff. I didn't know that I wanted mm-hmm. to be a filmmaker until I was twenty one. So it's really? like yeah, yeah, it wasn't like I was eight years old running around with a camera. Yeah, and some guys were, and I kind of envy. Like holy shit, you had the. You had you and your friends were out there making movies in your backyard like that. Like you know. the JJ story. It's like, oh yeah, I had a Super 8 camera when I was nine, and we made 75 movies. It's like, no. well, good for you. <laughs> right. and like, I wonder why they gave him The Force Awakens. <laughs> <laughs> He's been training for it since he was in He's vitro. Glad yeah. Welling since he was 15. <laughs> <Glad> <laughs> <Well>. yeah. <laughs> what an outlier he is. <laughs> yeah. So, 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 so that's when did you? Out, at yeah. what point did you like? All right, I got to learn how to act. So I was on the show at One Life. To live for about two years, and I was fired. Uh, they just at some point didn't renew the option. I, they had replaced executive producers. New guy came in, had a new vision. I, I, I remember telling myself that's why I got fired. But I also remember deep down knowing, um, like I don't know if a lot of a lot of people in this business probably feel this way. Like, oh, I'm I'm a fucking fraud. Like. I'm mm. really not. Everybody feels that. Too. I think mm. everyone feels that on some level, but yeah. I really was. Like, I really was just flying by the seat of my pants the whole time. So, uh, about two years in, I got fired, and then I realized, you know what? Like, there are certain things that I that I thought I could do pretty pretty sort of well innately, but there's a lot of shit that I don't know how to do or what mm. to do. So, I, I gotta I gotta go to class. I gotta I gotta figure this out. So. Uh, there's a great Meisner teacher who still teaches in New York named William Esper. Um, he was Sanford Meisner's sort of mm. TA or whatever, you know, at the neighborhood playoffs. So he actually time. worked with Meisner. He actually worked with Meisner and, you know, was spent a lot of years with him. So he went off and started his own school and he, he actually used to head up the, dra- the drama department at Rutgers. So he did that. Oh, oh, crap. He had his yeah, his, uh, studio in the city. So I studied with him and I realized, oh, there's a fuck ton I don't know. But... Um, and I'm terrified. I'm so scared of. It's like I studied all the other shit first, like voice and speech and movement and right. fucking. But it's like I, I was dancing around, getting to the, mm-hmm. you know, the stuff that's scary. Like you know, can I cry in front of a room full of strangers? And do I want to think about the stuff that makes me go there? So eventually, I did and um, did two years there, like night school, auditioning mm-hmm. during the day, cater again, just trying to fucking stay alive. Right. And in I'm, New York, too. In yeah. New York. I remember, so you stayed even after stayed. the, the yeah. gig was done? You are like, I'm here. I stayed. I was lucky to do some commercials to, mm. that kept me going. I had right. a commercial agency that, that got me some, some shit. Like, there's some, <laughs> some amazingly bad ones out there. First commercial <laughs> was a, a Preparation H commercial with Don Zimmer, who was like, a, <laughs> was he a, a manager for the Yankees? Yeah. yeah. That was. Uh, we went to Staten Island and shot that really late one night. But it was little things like that. <laughs> That's when they shoot prep age commercials. Yeah, I mean, it was way late. Man, it was, man. It was Let me tell you shoot. the ass cream story. It's two o'clock in the morning in Staten Island with Don Zimmer. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> unbelievable. So, but it was. I would get little breadcrumbs that would keep me alive, and I just remember, you know, like in the the, the days where you're like, "Fuck, should I even be doing this?" Like, right. the phone's not ringing, and um, I'm just another dude in a fucking town full of dudes, of, and everyone seems to be further along than me. That. Eventually, I just thought, all I gotta fucking do is stay alive. Because there's gonna be that one job, that one person that's gonna take a shine, you know, whether it's uh, just that casting director or that agent. And that's eventually what happened. I mean, like a little, here's like fucking three lines on Law and Order, you know, SVU. And here's like five lines on Criminal Intent. It's like, oh shit. So suddenly, like, okay, I went from three lines to five lines. I bet I could do more than that. It was this little bricks in the wall, like I like to call it. And then eventually, um, 
Yeah, I ended up out in Los Angeles. The long and short of that was Smallville. They mm. there was a there was an Aquaman character for one episode. They were going to spin it off. This yeah, is two thousand. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> With uh, Ving Rhames, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. So, so this was oh wait, five. stop. That I have vague memories of the show. That was a, an Aquaman. Yes, yeah, backdoor pilot that they shot but never so, aired. Yeah, so shot but never aired. But it was then the WB still. Yeah, and, wasn't uh, CW yet. Yeah, wasn't CW yet. And there was a weird thing about I think right that summer they had merged it and. Because a friend of mine got it, a guy who I was in, in class with, Bill Esper, got it. And I remember Les Moonves, like, wouldn't approve him. Uh, so I know at that point there was some sort of CBS involvement with WB. Right. Anyway, so this is 05. Uh, it was a one-episode thing for Smallville. I read for it in New York. It was the first thing I'd read for, you know, that, like, the tape gets sent out to L.A. Where, like, mm. physical tapes were being sent out. Where we got a call, like, hey, you know, the producers want to want to meet you. So I flew myself out. Met them. Uh, the uh, another guy got it, um, uh, and this wasn't. This was just for the just for the fucking guest star, the one guest star, and then you know based on how it tested or whatever, mm-hmm. they were going to spin it off, and then maybe you were the guy, maybe you weren't. Right. So I didn't end up getting that job, but um, that the, the doors kind of flew open out here. I was 28, and uh, I remember the casting director for for uh, Smallville, Dee Dee Bradley, was like, "Oh, you should go meet so and so down the hall." Um, you know, she's another casting director, and then I met. I forget her name. She said, oh, well, you should meet my friend over at Fox Features. Uh, That's how it works? So it's like one by one, somebody's like, oh, you should see this person. You see this person. You see this person. And I, here I was out in L.A. for was supposed to be for a business trip of four days. And then it was like, I, I can't go back to New York because... There's just so much more volume here, mm-hmm. um, and that's what brought me out here. And then, and then eventually, um, it just started it started picking up. Uh, for what me. was the first big gig? What was the gig where you were like, "Oh man, this well, is, now I've made it, and everybody in the world has seen me on this thing or in this thing." Uh, it's it's probably like I, I, what I want to say is the Flash, but but what it, probably uh, American Horror Story, the first mm. season. Uh, Murder House. Who, that, are you, who are you in that? Zach Quinto and I were the gay couple that owned the house Holy before. Shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So again, it's like it's it's nothing. <laughs> that's that, a huge gig. It was, that it was, was a huge gig. It was, yeah, that, that yeah, that was season one. So this was 2011, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that wow. was enough to get me in the room for Masters of Sex. So then it was sort of then that happened, and then I did the first two years contractually on Masters. Uh, the story, you know, wasn't going to involve me in season three. Then I'm available for Flash. Mm-hmm. I read. Mm-hmm. Um, I get the offer and now I'm, you know, go to Flash. So it was these, again, these sort of little steps. But it was never a thing where someone's like, oh, my, you're, you're him. It always, people remember season one of American Horror Story and they always need to be reminded. And I, I tell you what, I, I like that. I don't know about your approach, but for me, I kind of have like a, kind of a blue collar approach. Like, just fucking go to work and go home. Like, right, right, right. You just, you know what, just, just don't be showy about it. Don't be loud about it. Just do your fucking work and then if, it, it bubbles to the top. It bubbles to the top. I see. I wouldn't even say that. Like, like your work's memorable, but that first, like that, even that season is a blur at this point because they just keep well, getting more and more mm-hmm. fucked up. Well, I know. I, I, <laughs> like, that's true. Like, the first season, second season, you're like, oh yeah, this is fucking weird. Yeah. Man. I can't believe they do something. The asylum, and then yeah. then it felt like they were just like, let's yeah. just ratchet it the fuck up and yeah. see if anybody tunes in. <laughs> crazy yeah. for crazy sake. Pretty much. But kind I mean, of, still well done. It's not mm, like fucking yeah. like there's a schlock. No, and that's but that's Ryan Murphy. I think you know. It was like uh, crawling around the brain of Ryan Murphy, just like mm-hmm. he just wanted to let's let's play with this now, let's try this out. Like, I want to see this actor do this now. Like it, and we were all on board. It was like, dude, you're the guy with the vision. Let's just see what happens, you know. And they yeah. shot that on film. I feel like yeah, it's one of the few things that still, one of the last things probably last things, they shot on yeah, film. Yeah. Especially um, for television. Yeah, no yep. doubt. Yep. Hey man, so you worked so you worked in a Ryan Murphy production, then you went yep. to Berlanti Land. Yeah. Yeah. How exactly. does one get cast? How long was the process? Was it like, oh, we saw him in this, we want him, read and bang? No, or? no, I've I've never just been straight offered something media. I always have to go in. But but it's it's this cool thing of um it's just sort of easier, I think, to get in the rooms now. Oh, you know, he just did this, and then right. there's sort of a recognition among the people who watch these things. But I still have to prove my worth every time I go in. So the so the Berlanti the the Flash you know audition I remember um, just getting a phone call for it. It was like here it's a big arc for season two, sort of a mentor character for Barry, and I hadn't seen season one. And in the the sides of the Flash sides it didn't say 
Jay Garrick. It, it was a made-up name. It was, yeah. you know, it was a bit of misdirect. They didn't want to give it away. But had right. I seen the end, had it one seen the end of season one, and had I known the comics yeah. better, I probably would have put two and two together. Like, oh, this is for Jay Garrick. All right. But, uh, but I didn't. I just went in. I read sort of my idea of it, and then I got a nice phone call saying, "Hey, you know, we mm-hmm. we we want you to do it, but here's it's not who we are. You know, it's it, it's not what you think it is. This is sort of what we have in mind, but it's there's going to be a twist." Mm-hmm. Uh, so that happened sort of, like with the when they essentially offered you the part. So you came yeah. in, read, and then how long uh, after you read, or or how long after you? It was. Uh, I, I got a. I and this is this is when it's it's good. Is I got a phone call. I it might, it might have been twenty minutes after I left. I was driving home, and it was. Um, they were very interested, very enthusiastic, and so I thought, oh shit, like this might actually happen. And then it took another week. I think they saw another round of guys. Uh, they weren't convinced. I mean, I'm sure they'll all tell you, just based on what I did in the room, that I could go and be the dark mm-hmm. side guy because the sides were light. You know, the sides right. were this, you know, I don't know, picture like a Han Solo-ish, you know, world-weary guy who who is a mentor, has seen it seen it all, done it all, and is like, hey, kid, you know, let me tell you how it is. Well, that's what, what, what happened in the room, but I think they wanted to see. So I, I did, a, uh, I did a, a Blumhouse movie called Curve, that I'd never seen, but that's pretty. That's pretty dark. Uh, so they just got some footage, sent it to Berlanti, and I think they were happy with it. Oh, he could, he could go dark. So I, now, when yeah. did they tell you what was going to happen to Jay Garrett? So uh, we started shooting in July, and I I had to say yes before that. So this mm-hmm. was in June. This was like mm-hmm. a late June. So uh, basically, before cameras even started to roll for, right. for season so one. They spelled it out for me what what their intention was. And right away, that's got to be like, oh my god, this is fucking way better. I thought I was gonna yeah. be playing like the hero. Yeah, I get to play the hero and the fucking. Villain. Yeah, sort of like, but even like the hero is sort of this sort of great, you know, sort of a forty square, squeaky yeah. clean, really cool, like kind of iconic, you know, golden age guy. So, but yeah, yeah, exactly. I I was gonna be able to wear a, a couple of different hats. Um, but then when we were shooting, man, I got really attached to to being Garrick. I just thought like. I remember I just I think I convinced myself like you know you know what they're not going to do what they said <laughs> no, you know they've changed their mind and uh, and you know because I didn't hear anything for months and and I remember thinking um, just trying to convince myself like you know they're going to get someone else to be Zoom I'm going to be Jay the whole this is great I I get to find you know I get to be this guy and uh, it was the episode when um, Caitlin was like I can't find your doppelganger anywhere on Earth mm. on Earth One and then I took her to the park and I pointed out. Hunter Solomon. I remember reading that in the script and thinking, uh, well, here we go. Yeah, here we this go. This is it. They're this doing it. it. Yep, yep. It's Did you, it. when you got the part, were you like, all right, I'm going to go read a bunch of comics? Yeah, I remember calling uh, or emailing Todd and Aaron Helbing. Mm-hmm. Or, actually, I remember even seeing them on, uh, I saw them on uh, either in the writer's room or on set, I can't remember, and I said, listen, a- anything you got. And so he called DC, and DC sent a bunch of JSA stuff, the mm-hmm. stuff Jeff Johns had done. Right. They... Uh, Kreisberg, I, I remember talking to him on the phone, he said, you know what, there's been so many sort of iterations of The Flash since 1940, and mm. so so many reboots of this. He said, I don't want you to get too mixed up in sort of who this guy is, you know, historically. What you did in the room is what we really liked. You brought the sort of the sense of who we want. So we'll give you some stuff uh, for context and stuff, but don't, don't mm. basically don't um, drive yourself crazy. Mm. Uh, so that's how that happened. Yeah. When did you see the Zoom costume first? Deep into shooting? Deep into shooting. Because like, they, so, because Zoom was in the show. Yeah. And like, uh, and this is some inside baseball mm-hmm. here, man. Go to a fucking three shot for this <laughs> one. <laughs> Having been on the Flash set myself. You know things. Yes, I know th- some things. Um, I've seen Teddy in the Zoom suit. Yeah. And I've yeah. seen the stunt dude in the Zoom suit. Yeah, Ryan Hanley. Yeah. And I've heard the voice on the show, which yeah. is Tony Todd. Mm-hmm. And it's three different components together. So, for a while on the show, Zoom was the stunt guy. Yeah, yeah. So you didn't have to put on the suit. So you could no. think for a while, like, maybe they aren't going to fucking put me in that black suit. Maybe <laughs> and, I'm not. And, and there was never a mention of, you know what, um, we got this big, I feel like it was episode four or five was called Enter Zoom. Yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and I, they didn't come to me once and say, hey, listen, you should really, you should, you should watch this. You should come to the table read. Mm-hmm. You should, it was like, I was reading all the J stuff. I wasn't reading or touching any of the Zoom stuff. So I, you know, I guess I got maybe cues of like, well, maybe since they didn't ask me, they don't really, they don't really want me anymore. So I don't remember seeing the Zoom costume until, um, shit, man. I, I mean, I, 
I want to say it was even after the big Zoom episode. It was six, seven, eight. I mean, we're, we're talking, we're now mm. months into shooting. And the first time I put it on was the weirdest, because I was, you know, I've been wearing the Garrick stuff the whole time. Right. <laughs> first time putting the Zoom costume on, on my episode. It was really bizarre, but it was also really tough. I remember putting it on, walking into set, Star Labs, where we had the, sort of the big, you know, I'm telling them how I, you know, how I got here and how I basically played all of you guys. And it was the first time that I was across the table from everybody. Mm -hmm. Every other time before, I was, we were shoulder to shoulder, we were figuring out, you know, how do we defeat the meta of the week or whatever it is. And this time, I'm in a different, and I'm across, the, and it, it, was really, it was hard because right. I really grew just as, t as myself, but playing Jay, like to really love everybody, you know, mm -hmm. really love all these actors and everything they brought. So to suddenly be their adversary, uh, that was hard. I mean, I, I had to really, uh, I had to really just get, I had to be okay with it really quickly because if I didn't, I was gonna, I was gonna, I was gonna, wasn't gonna be 100% mm, where I needed to be, yeah. the guy. You know, like you talk about going back to drawing on personal shit and all that stuff. I wasn't gonna be that guy, I was gonna be there. I was gonna be Teddy, who plays Jay, dressed as Zoom, half-assing it because I, I don't want to make these guys mad. I don't know. It was a weird sort of thing that happened, but but you would imagine it's like, oh crap! I get to play another role. I'm gonna slip into it easy. But you grew affectionate toward the character you were playing, and the role that you had with the yeah. others in the show. And then suddenly, like tables turn, motherfucker. I, you're I, the dark side, and you're like, yeah. I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> and, and I had a kind of a minor freak out just just internally uh, when we first shot when, when there was the reveal, the mask mm. reveal. Yeah, that was two in the morning. It was the last shot of the night. It was my only shot of the episode, so I was just meeting the director for the first time. I was just arriving to set at 1.30, and it was only one shot. We're gonna do one shot when they, they come around, you know, and do the reveal. And I remember uh, we'd staged it all, I'm in the thing, you know, I got my hands here, I'm about to pull them. And, and I remember thinking all of a sudden, I was like, holy fuck, who is this guy? Like, who is Zoom? Mm. Who, is, who is Zolomon? And, and, and it was nothing I'd ever, I should have done my homework, but. Uh, I had. A, I remember thinking we we did it three or four times. Luckily, it was a it was a technical sort of camera move. It wasn't so that required a couple passes. A couple passes, which was so good for me. But I remember thinking like, well, is it my voice coming out right now, or is Tony Todd going to do his voice oh, when my lips move? You know, uh, what the fuck? I just I had a real <laughs> what meltdown moment where you're like, I don't even yeah. know where I am in this. Yeah, I, I have no idea, and I and I didn't want to cheat or shortchange the viewers, so. Um, we found it in there, everyone was happy. Uh, I remember calling Todd and being like, Todd, I think that take was fucking garbage. If you wanna do it again, we're shooting in that same place next week. Mm -hmm. Like, we can do it again, man. I just want you to know that I had a haul these. So then we had a long talk, he spelled it out for me, and uh, it, it turns out he'd seen the dailies, he was really happy with it, so it was okay. But I remember thinking, um, wow, yeah, this is not gonna be so easy just to put on a different costume mm -hmm. and be a different guy. Uh, and luckily, the next episode too, I had, I had zero lines. It was Cisco vibes his way in, and uh, and you see me take the mask off again. Right. It's like I hear something and then I just walk off. So I, I had a good two, three weeks to to work to figure this dude out. But I remember I, it's for, I'd never I had never told anyone that that I, that was there was a moment where I was like I don't know I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Thank God I only have one thing to say. the mask off. Who the fuck is this guy? Yeah. What yeah. if I just never take it off? Yeah. Yeah. Fuck them. Yeah. Yeah. Kenny, until five a.m. Yeah. Take the mask off. No yeah. Ask action, Danny. Take, take the mask off. <laughs> no way you can't. Yeah. Yeah. What uh, what you play the hero? You play villain. Which is yeah. more fun? The villain is there's just so much mm. more to chew on. You right. know. Where I thought I loved the hero, uh, I, I give that up in a second. To do to the Zoom stuff is so multi-layered and complicated and fucking weird, you know, and creepy. And also, it makes so much sense to me that like there's so much sort of happening at once that um, it's like uh, it's kind of an actor's dream to just sort of roll around in that alternate alternate mm -hmm. universe, man, mm -hmm. all that alternate sort of headspace. What's the closest you ever got to slipping and telling somebody the secret? Oh man, that's a good question. Because they're yeah. tight, right? Like they make you sign a thousand things, sort of like you can't fucking spoil this, dude. Dude, here's you know, yeah, you know what's funny? Uh, my wife's the only one who knew. And she's great, you know, she's great. But she, what happened was fuck. So we, so I sign, you know, sign the contracts, and uh, you know, great, gonna go, gonna go do this for the season. It shows up on IMDb like I don't know. I, I'm talking like a day or two later, and. Uh, I, I'm on IMDb because I'm going to add a Masters of Sex credit. This is June. I'm, I'm shooting an episode, so I go on to add a credit. And I remember see, it, it says Flash, 
uh, uh, Jay Garrick slash Zoom. Like, you know, as, you know, <laughs> he's fucking spoiled it right in the IMDb right list. There. So I'm seeing this and I'm like, this is, okay. It's weird. And it has all these episodes spelled out, you know, they don't have titles, 1.1, 1. Mm-hmm. 1. 1. 1.2, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think much of it because I think, well, uh, you know, someone put that there, so someone must know what they're doing. <laughs> like a day later, or maybe, the, I don't know, the, later that day, Kreisberg sees this somehow. I don't know, it was brought to his attention, he sees it. He, he calls my agent, he calls my manager, he's convinced that, you know, they, they must have put that on IMDb because no one else knows this. Right. They know it because they were privy to this conversation, so it must have been them. And neither one of them, they just don't do that. Like, I, I don't know. So I think we figured out that it was probably someone in the office at Warner Brothers, like, saw on the contract, like, oh, he's playing these two characters and just entered it in. I don't know how it happened. Right. It was taken down really quickly. But so there was, if someone had gone on <laughs> in a day or two, and luckily no one was looking, Screen no one gave a shit, could have easily been like, hey, so uh, that was the closest. I mean, talk about like whisker close of yeah. actually right. it mm-hmm. fucking being out there before it even, it, before the. We and then they might shooting. change the whole storyline, like, fuck it, let's just Not change it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I'm totally grateful. And I, it, anyway, so so I, I didn't tell anyone. And I don't remember, after that, I was scared shitless. Like, I wasn't even going to hint, like, so, you know, I'm playing the good guy, but there's a thing. No, I didn't. <laughs> I was like, no, and, uh, He's what, got a dark side. What was hard, yeah. yeah. What was hard was, was, was doing interviews early because. Um, because again, it was like I was getting lots of questions about Jay, and I and I, I told what I thought to be the truth, which is I'm just playing Jay. That's all. That's all there is. But if you go back, and this was my hope. Now, if you go back and watch the the show, mm. that you'll see little um, pieces in there where, where you're like, well, that's a weird moment. Like, mm. you know, when we first see Jay, he's stepping behind something. He's taking a picture, and he's sort of looking at the the digital image of Barry, and then he sort of slips back. So from moment one, you're, you're sort of like. But we're so sort of blinded by Jay Garrick's on the show. And yeah. he's like, he's Jay Garrick. He's got the hat. He's got the hat. hat. <laughs> yes, his fucking hat. To, you know, we ignore these sort of telltale signs. Um, anyway, my hope is if you go back, you'll see three or four of those sort of layered in where you could. There it was. Put it back up. Put that, that picture that? back up. Holy, oh, it's like you morphed into him. <laughs> that is, um, I'm telling you, when that hat came through the breach, <laughs> nice. the hole in nice, nice stuff, dude. Good profile. <laughs> um, let's see what happens. Go live. Okay. It. Oh, so damn close. Oh, my God. It's like a $5 bill on a $5 bill. <laughs> the, uh, the, when, when they showed the hat. That didn't work at all. Yeah, Neither shit. of us. That's, that's all. Like, that's like, like, <laughs> heaven to hell. <laughs> the, uh, when they showed that hat come through the breach of the season finale, dude, and it looked and sounded, more importantly, like you would imagine that hat to. So, yeah. You know, your heart stopped. And that was in the middle of an episode that, like, there were so many things fucking going on, big, wonderful things, yeah. that they threw that in there. And you were just, I remember Jay Muse called me up and he was like, they showed the other Flash's hat. <laughs> really? <Yeah. laughs> and right away, it was like big news, man. So, like, uh, once you cool. got to, I think it was the end of episode one, is where we meet Jay. Just walking through, yeah, your world is in danger. And that, that it's the same line that starts two, and the end of two is when we see the suit and everything for right, the first right, time. Right. Yeah. It was fantastic, man. And oh, you filled that fuck. suit, like, aside from filling the suit well, you filled those shoes well. Even as Jay, like, because I didn't know the Zoom thing was coming. Yeah. So I was like, oh, right on, man. He's fucking playing yeah. Jay Garrick. He's the Flash. Man. So by the time Amazing. they do the flip, the M. Night moment, we were like, yeah. oh, what the fuck? He's the villain as well. <laughs> right. Um, which, that you got to, they gave you a wonderful gift in the All Hunter's Element Secret Origin episode, because you got to do... Yeah. A lot of stuff. A in lot one of episode. stuff. Yeah, go a lot of places. Yeah, yeah. Um, did you, uh, I don't know, like, were you, uh, actually, I think the thing I, I really want to ask is, I know I didn't see season one. Did, did this mirror season one sort of reveal of, like, the guy who you thought was the good guy is actually, because we were Well, there was, Wells, there was that, know? there's just that element of, like, oh, we thought he was their friend, but he turned yeah. out to be a bastard. But they... I feel like they tipped that way earlier in season one. Like, I remember the moment mm. they kind yeah. of gave you the hint that Wells was a shit or that he was Eobard Thawne. It was like, oh, my God, they're doing this already? Like, yeah. mm. why would you tell me this now? And they went yeah. a whole half season yeah. with the right. audience knowing and Barry not. Right, but, like, so much of... It seems the theme of this show is the perils of trust. Yeah. You right. know, it's that oh, Barry wants... I like what a writer. Barry right? Wants, yeah, I'm writer, telling you, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, writer, like yeah. for a guy who never knew his dad, he wants to know a dad. He wants to trust a person. Yeah. 
And so, and do you and, think they're fuck? God damn it! Do you think they're cognizant of that in the writers' room? I absolutely do. Where they're like, we got to keep throwing father at figures at them that just fuck them over. Yeah, like I feel like it's some wow. kind of motif. It's like a theme in music where it'll just recur and then it'll pop here and then disappear in the next wow, season. Yeah. Like the echoes of it. Right. In the same way that like Force Awakens has echoes of Star Wars because yeah. it's part of the music. It's part of the thing that we love about it. Right. And so for Barry to trust a guy who and he wants to trust so badly. Yeah. That's who he is. He's a guy who wants to trust and believe and believe in the best in people. Yeah. It was and a it, dope moment on that show this season when he found out when Cisco was like, you know, I saw him, I saw Jay, Jay is Zoom. Yeah. And fucking Barry like takes off and yeah, goes to that just, mountain and he's just like, ah! <laughs> Yeah. They, really fucking dope because you're like, fuck the <laughs> God damn it. Yeah. Like, but but I never felt like in watching season two, like, this is a replay of season one. Well, okay. Thematically, yeah. like, it's like he said, all smart, yeah. like, yeah. the idea <laughs> of like this guy, of course he would trust somebody else and why wouldn't you trust a guy who's like I'm the flash on my earth right. and you know right. it seemed like it was all on the up and up and you guys the, yeah. the audience had history on on our side yeah so we thought like we bought it hook line and sinker yeah. like I never thought well it's gonna he's gonna be the bad guy watch mm, like right. never once in a okay. million years yeah, it felt like was... you were the good guy from that earth and then zoom mm -hmm. was your arch nemesis and stuff yeah. Yeah. but also you have the great like red herring of Harrison Wells being there who yeah. you expect to be the bad guy yeah. in yeah. plain sight so yeah. like, oh we don't trust him we automatically don't trust him fuckers are clever man like for they, those, the flash man. writers room Jesus Christ like mm -hmm. you if they ever put aside these fucking silly stories and got to work on cancer, <laughs> <laughs> fucking well, done. Yeah, done. Yeah. Oh my god, they're done. so smart. Did, did you get to go to the writers' room? Did you? Did you Never. Go? No, I, I still haven't. I keep threatening Andrew. I'm like, I'm gonna come visit. Yeah. But um, yeah, yeah. they, you know, the season that. like when I was in the edit suite with Felicia cutting our episode. They were like already in. Pro you guys were back up in production yeah. in the last two. Okay. And those last two, as you know, were like mammoth. So yeah. all the attention was there, and I didn't want to be it. like, "Come hang out with me." No, I sure. figure <laughs> I wait for the season to end. Yeah, and yeah. And more importantly, honestly, like wait for my episode to air because everyone's like slapping backs now. But what if it's like lowest rated <laughs> flash ever? Yeah. Jumping the king shark. Like, yeah. You know. <laughs> but dude, but I, I have to say, you know, listen, I've always been a massive fan of yours. Seriously, you're you're fucking. Man. Once I mean, you mentioned Amos Caddy. I'm like, I bet you liked our movie. <laughs> yeah, loved them, and they were always on repeat, man. Mall rats, especially in college, it was just, oh, I was always on, you know? So, meeting you was a thrill, but also, I mean, just getting to know you a little bit on set, how, how, um, Oh God! Respectful you were of Flash and and nervous like you it was, you were so yeah. human about it. No, you're human about you were being my first like, scene too. First scene that like first five days early or something. Yeah, like, before know? like they were shooting the episode uh, prior to mine, uh, well, Armin's episode, Armin's the one episode, that just yeah. aired. And so yeah. they, I guess you guys were on that set already. Well, on the you set and already. Danielle. And I and I think and uh, there was I, a schedule thing where somebody, I had to get back for 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 twenty four, which I, I was shooting the pilot, and I just needed to be. Did you you shot the pilot for twenty four? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna How'd do that. Go? Yeah, it was good. We got picked up, so we're gonna do that next. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's really good. Um, uh, so that there was a bit of that too. Like I needed to be here, which was probably serendipitous. But I I, right. I loved that you were like, you know what? It was. You could tell it was your temple in a way, like you're such a fucking flash guy, but also, you know, you were like, I just, um, I'm not here to put my fucking spin on things. I'm not mm. here to make it mine. I'm here to serve what's already out there. And uh, I'm not here to sort of, you know, fuck anything up. And I, and I hope I don't, it, I, I could, I very well could show mm. up and do that. And I just sort of loved how you approached everything. And I just, and it, it was clear as actors that, that you were so um, grateful and, Pleased and uh, and trusting of us, you know, to Big just let time. us do our thing. Yeah, I mean, honestly, that means the world. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, that's. I went in going like, you love the show, yeah. From, because all these people make it every week without you. Yeah. So you know, you weren't gonna walk in and be like, let me show you how fuckers how to make the flash and hitch yeah. up my flash pants or something like that. <laughs> like, no, it was like I just came. I came honestly to see how it happened. Yeah. Like, and I figured sure. at the end of it all, like my job was one of opinion and suggestion. One of it's like, oh, I think it'd be cool if we did this or suggestions like, ooh, let's try this. But yeah. at the end of the day, like you guys were the sharpest tools. Like, like even like here, I was working at a deficit when we shot our first scene because mm -hmm. I hadn't seen any of your Zoom portrayal stuff oh, or yeah. Hunter Zolomon stuff. Yeah. So that was like real education too, where I'm like, well, I can't go in and tell him how to do it because at this point he's probably done it yeah. for three episodes. Yeah. Good news is 
we got on, and that was kind of dope because I was used to watching you be Jay on the show. Yeah, and then like you know, he had to deliver this fucking like monologue to her of <laughs> yeah, you know was... that's kind of like he's not shitty to her, but he's like if you make the wrong choice. I will be shitty to you, <laughs> but in a real like charming kind of way and stuff. Yeah. But a good like, and also a very uh, sociopathic kind of like. This all makes sense to me, mm. yeah, and it yeah. should make sense to you. Yeah. But you know, it's, I'm gonna I'm gonna go out there and you think about this. Yeah. So it was kind of an education too, going like, oh my god, that's how he's doing Zoom. Yeah. Like you know, like yeah, that's sure. I get to hear it. Oh, I saw him pull a mask off once before, but suddenly I'm like, this is how he's playing the character. Yeah. And it was like silky smooth, and right then and there again, like first take. I, I'm like, oh, this is gonna be easy. Like, I, I don't have to do anything. Yeah. I just have to sit here and watch and be like, look at him going bad, and in a good way. Right, like, right, normally, right. when you say that about an actor, you're like, look at him going bad. It's like Bruce Willis, but you're like, look at him going bad, and he's doing it awesome on camera and shit. We're, it was we're, fun, and you guys were real wonderful together. Like you'd worked thanks. together a bunch of red yeah, and stuff, yeah. and it was late it was at night. Report. But it was, it was, yeah. it was the, in this previous episode, in Armin's episode, yeah. and so to get a jump start and to clear up schedule bits. They were like, okay, let's let's. Do you mind shooting a little bit early? Yeah. And it was like five days this before, before the table read. You yeah. had not even yeah, yeah seen and it heard was. the the thing read out loud. You know, totally, man. But yeah. I was like, oh my god, let's do it, man. Anything to yeah. save time. So yeah. it was nice, it, yeah. like to jump in, and and they were all warmed up because they'd been working all day long and yeah. stuff. It was like the last thing. Yeah, yeah. But it was really nice. That was my first. I always remember that because that was my first piece. You guys were my first performances on on the yeah. show and like you know it was real and both of you were very very sweet like uh, you were very so you mentioned mall rats as well yeah and we were talking we talked hockey too yeah and um and danielle knew two of the boys i worked with on red state and stuff so oh, everybody yeah. was <laughs> super fucking sweet man and then the thing that i was happiest about was like i come from indie film world so you tend to not overshoot yeah um you guys come from we do this every day world so you tend to be zoned in perfectly to dialed into your on character take one yeah like fucking we shot take one and I'm like oh fuck yeah. like we're moving on like you know you don't get to do that often in movies you go like that was good a strong start yeah. we gotta do these nine things that'll make it even better right. but after one take I was like and I turned to to Lexi who was the AD yeah. uh, I mean the uh, script supervisor and I was like you know, I'd, I'd have never done this before. Is it shitty? Can I, can I say, <laughs> can we like, go? we're moving on? Because like, yeah. that was great. And she's like, if you feel, move on. Yeah. So I was like, yeah. moving on. Yeah, yeah. And so it was nice. I got to establish a tone right away or, or sure. sort of like, yeah, we can, as long as you feel like you got the performance, yeah. go. Yeah. And you guys brought the performances in, like, the first takes, man. It was nuts. Yeah, thanks, man. That yeah. comes from all that work, though. It's like they hand sure. you a script, and every eight days... Bang, bang, yeah, a yeah. whole new adventure. It's like a whole new movie every eight days. Yeah, exactly. And like you, you said something earlier about just uh, if, if we can save time, like we, we feel the same way. It's sort of the, the best way of going about it is just being ready from moment one. And um, yeah, there's going to be fuck ups yeah. along the way. But, but really, like from doing it week in, week out for all this time, you, you hope that you just sort of, yeah, you just sort of land into it and you, you, you get it right out of the gate. And um, a lot of the directors on the show would, two three takes maybe per side and the cameras are always kind of moving you know if we have three cameras set up which we usually do there's uh yeah they'll, they'll they'll just sort of tweak a little bit you know tweak a lens or flip a different thing and we just do the same shit before we know it mm -hmm. we're covering a different side and it's sort of this great mutual trust between a fantastic crew director who knows exactly what he wants and then the actors who are you know the performances are just so based on everything we've done before and it just it really mm -hmm. is sort of a nice it's a, it's a great fucking place to go to work. Yeah, you know? oh and everyone God. who goes through there will tell you the same thing. And and these these folks in the crew up in Vancouver, dude, like just salt of the earth, like a hundred percent film crew, salt of the earth, good yeah. people. Like not nobody gets shitty mm. when it gets late, or nobody gets shitty no. if like things fuck up. Everyone, you know, it's just that's which is so fucking right in my zone as well. So it's just peaceful, and you yeah, create was, in yeah. a good way, you know, in a speedy and speedy way because you always got to be moving. Yeah. Um, 24, let's jump to 24 real quick. Yeah. What, um, who, when, are you, so you're working right now? I don't want you to spoil anything. No, 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 like it's just, you guys are up. shooting right now? No, we'll start in, uh, in July, I think. Uh, and, and it starts airing in the fall? Don't know, fall or, or you know, we're only doing 12, so mm -hmm. wherever Fox wants to slot at night, I don't know right. anything about that. Um, it's like a good post Super Bowl sort of thing. Absolutely. I have mm -hmm. heard that kicked around. I heard uh, they launched the first 24 right after the World Series, I think, mm -hmm. that year. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. 
So, you know, and I know it's a big is property. Is this a for relaunch? Fox. It's a relaunch, total reboot. I mean, it's still, you still have CTU. Right. You know, right. and. Corey you, Hawkins is the lead. Corey right? Hawkins is the lead. From Just straight out of Compton. Strong. He was uh, Dre. Dr. Dre. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. Strong, strong actor. Oh, another DC guy, which is crazy. Uh, Jimmy Smith's, Miranda Otto, Dan Bukatinsky. It's just a great, it's a great uh, sort of relaunch of, of the thing. Right. You know, and Howard Gordon, who does Homeland, mm. and like. He did X Files too. Uh, X Files too. Yeah. yeah, he's got good pedigree. And unlike the pilot of the original Twenty Four, which I just rewatched before <laughs> going into it, same um, same director by the way who did uh, did both. Um, really? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Stephen Hopkins. So he knew exactly mm. what they wanted, and you know, he, he has the whole thing figured out. But the original Twenty Four pilot, uh, you know, it took a little while in the first episode for for shit to happen. But mm-hmm. the end of it, you know. Wow, this shit's about to go down. But in our pilot, I mean, it shits down from page right. one. Right. I think they're, we're just getting right into it, and uh, yeah, and Corey Hawkins is going to be—you know—he's not Jack Bauer, but he's—he's he's the dude. He's he, the lead. Yeah. He's the lead in it, and you know, and. Um, are you guys gonna get to like go to the bathroom in between all that? I was always a knock on the first that, like, yeah. <laughs> shink, yeah. shink, shink, yeah. shink, shink, shink. No one's ever, yeah, no one's ever going to the bathroom. We're we have time. Yeah, yeah. yeah my, one of my brothers said, he's like, how many times are you gonna say, we're running out of time? <laughs> he's like, really, really just lot. learn to deliver that line. And yeah. we're Ten good. Yeah. Yeah. And we're in like, good shape. Open a socket. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled. I mean, Flash is great. Uh, the door's not shut. I mean, I'm not giving anything away no, 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 uh, no. About, about how things have, have ended, and we're not, we don't care about spoilers here, but um, by moving on to 24, if anyone's listening it's and thinking like, It's not preventative. Like, well, not, it's not preventative, no. 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 So if anybody's sitting there doing like the mental math going, he's in the show, so he's off that shit, not yeah, at all. Like, I, at I don't all. know if you've noticed new television, <laughs> you could 96 shows. Oh, pretty much. It don't fucking matter because yeah. they shoot out of, you know, mm-hmm. different times of seasons. Yeah, so. yeah. So it's, so it's, so that's good. I mean, Flash has been great. We got a, Yours airs, uh, and then three left. Two I mean, more after mine. Two more after yours. There's three left total. Okay. There's mine, and then the two, then the two more. Yeah. Um, and it only gets like you mentioned. It just gets keeps getting better, better and bigger. Yeah, yeah they end on such a fucking high note. Ugh. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, these cookies right here. <laughs> <laughs> Teddy, Teddy's right. Zoom in on here. Give us a close up of these. Cookies. Give us a zoom. Look, Look at that. Yeah, no, yeah, don't zoom. zoom. <laughs> we'll hold the Look at that. Look at yeah, that. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Melissa, okay. my wife, she made those uh, mm-hmm. for tonight. Yeah. We got some Rice Krispie treats. Just, uh, it, it's been. We want to give a shout out to her because she made us food. When did you guys get married? How long uh, have you been married? Two and a half years? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. Uh, October How long did you know each other 13. prior to marriage? We were together five years. We were great friends. God, a uh, year, year and a half before that. So we're looking at you know, almost eight plus years. We've known each other. Mm-hmm. It was great. We were neighbors. We were just great <laughs> friends. Really? Yeah, we were great friends. And then, um, you know, eventually... She she split with the guy she was seeing, and then like, whoa, there's, like, there's something I could be here. So much mm. more than a great friend. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, this that sounds like a TV show. And let me tell you, <laughs> <laughs> way to bring it back to like, where we started. Uh, I like it. Yeah, it's a gift. <laughs> and yeah. the button. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is, uh, give it up for the amazing Teddy uh, Sears, man. Come on, thanks guys. I mean, I feel he's like he's your hero, and you know. he's your fucking villain. What is that? Thanks. Talk about Kevin doing flash commentary next Tuesday. That's right. We are going to uh, do, you know, for the airing of the episode. This is mm-hmm. this episode is airing Monday. Yes. So probably tomorrow night is the episode, our episode of the Flash. Mm-hmm. Not yours, but you're I, in spirit. If you're, <laughs> yeah, it's all of ours. Yep. Yeah. Um, Mostly theirs. Yeah. No, but it's a mm-hmm. Flash belongs to all of us, mm-hmm. folks. Um, except it really belongs to WB. Yes. And they'll and, remind and you very Greg quickly. Greg <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Greg Land is yeah. proprietary interests. Um, but mm-hmm. that's on Tuesday, so we're gonna do something we're not sure i don't think mm. we'll do a live thing because that makes no sense because i want them to watch the episode mm. so i think maybe what we'll do is right i'm doing like the cw fan talk thing before the east coast airing you which you've done i, I saw done. you they I sent me pictures like this yeah. legit teddy did i'm like ah, <laughs> um, <laughs> as long as teddy did. i am not legit but no, uh i you. did that and i'm gonna do that and then i'll i figure why do a live event during mm. the show because people want to be watching the episode you want to be mm. competing so afterwards, I think we'll do a, a thing. Mm-hmm. 
That'll go up on yep. Tuesday once the episode is aired on the East Coast. So that means East Coast people can watch the episode, then they can watch the whatever we wind up doing. Mm. And the West Coast people can watch it at their leisure or whatever. I'm sorry, that's over telling you what's going to happen <laughs> tomorrow <laughs> from when you're watching this. But You could just wait. Yeah, yeah. just if you yeah, <laughs> stick around 10 more hours straight, something's going to work out for us. Uh, but what worked out today was Teddy came in, man. How fucking uh, awesome is that, dude? So like, you did a great job, dude. You had... Heavy lifting to do, and as much as everyone has a preconceived notion of what the Golden Age Flash is to them, and you were able Thank to you. fucking pull that off. You were able to bring uh, Jay Garrick to life, and then fuck us by, <laughs> <laughs> by not being yeah. Jay Garrick yeah. at all, yeah, not and even, being not a bad guy, um, yeah. that, which is the highest compliment I think. Um, I don't know any any actor or, so, or just anyone striving to to I don't know be successful. Is that the people who watch the show were mm. happy and were were, God, yes. were mm. also not ready for the turn, you know? Right. Um, and you, I man, I'm just such a massive fan of yours. So I, coming from you, that honestly means the world. Thank oh, you. Well, this is a yeah. mutual admiration. So, it is. Yeah. 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 Fat man on that man. <laughs> um, that's uh, Teddy fucking Sears, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> God, you've seen him here in a couple months. You're gonna be like, that's the guy from 24. <laughs> and I'm gonna be saying Zoom in, but we'll forever say that Zoom is mm. Jay Garrick, man. This is a big yeah. season for that show. Yeah. Um, yes. Defining season. And uh, fuck, everyone's firing on all cylinders there. Big things about to close out the season, thanks to Teddy right here, man, zooming it up. Uh, that's all the time we got for this week. Thanks for hanging out with us here uh, in the Fat Cave. Uh, I, I, we will be back again What was it? tomorrow, yes. like I said. So come see us. I've been Kevin Smith. Mark Bernardin. Guess who that was? Teddy Sears. There it yes. is, man. Join us. Well, us two. In the Fat Cave again tomorrow, as we discussed earlier. Same fat time. Same fat channel. Smodcast.com or YouTube.com slash Kevin Smith. Hey man, it's me, Kevin Smith. Thanks for watching. Do me a favor, click that thing below that says subscribe. Every time you click that, you save a baby kitten from murder.